Hot keys. So let's open up the hot key editor under the Windows menu. Windows settings and preferences about halfway down. Hot key editor pretty close to the top there. And that opens this lovely dialog. When you first open this up, you're going to see Maya default, and that's what you're going to be on. But you see right now, I've also got Maya default duplicate. That is because of various changes and tweaks that I made to doing past demos for this class. As you can see, there's a lock on the Maya default set. You cannot delete that one. You can only delete duplicates that you make or that Maya makes for you. Let me show you exactly what happens. So if I put my duplicate here, the gear menu is how I can delete, rename whatever, uh, whatever current set I'm on, export. So you can export your set, take it to some other program or some other machine, uh, import all your hotkeys in there. I'm gonna delete this one for right now. Get rid of that. So now I'm just back on my default. This is what you guys see when you open this up. Now, if I jump down in here to start browsing through categories and things, let's say menu items, open up my file menu, for example, and I can see lots of hotkeys and cool things in here. The moment I click over here in this hotkey space, even just to view, I'm not necessarily editing something, but Maya thinks I might edit a hotkey when I click in here. The moment I do that, it makes a duplicate set for me. The default Maya hotkey set can never be deleted and to prevent any accidental changes from being made, it makes this duplicate set for you, it copies every single hotkey assignment into this duplicate set. From now on, all changes I make are happening in that duplicate set, but be very aware of this. If I at some point jump back into the Maya default and I happen to write in there doing what I just did, it made another duplicate set. I didn't even do anything special. So if I jump back to my default now, and then again, browse down here, maybe under custom scripts uh, or something more useful like editors, like go here, graph editor and choose something. Now I have my default duplicate too. So in just a couple seconds here, I've given myself three different duplicate sets and then they all have different kinds of things tied to them. So the reason I'm bringing this up is once you notice that my has made a duplicate set for you, Live as much as you can in that duplicate set. Don't jump back to default and then, and then back in here because you never know when it'll make a new duplicate set for you and that'll have things that the other one doesn't. And you have some of your changes in one and different changes in this one and so forth. Uh, and there's no way of really aware of any way of merging those things. I can import and export, but I can't merge all the sets into a certain kind of unified set if I have a bunch of duplicates. Uh, so, Try as best you can to live and do all your changes in a single duplicate set. And just be very aware of how my is going to treat things if you happen to go back to the default set that's there. So I'm going to kill uh, duplicate set two. Yes, get rid of that one. Back to duplicate one. Delete that one. Just live in the one duplicate set I've got. Choose that one very specifically before, before we even go browsing through and doing other things uh, down in here. So as you can see, there are different categories in here, menu items, editors, choose a submenu or whatever, what kind of editor you want to mess with, uh, other items, different things in the reference editor, selections, you name it, all kinds of crazy stuff in here, tons and tons of stuff. But not all these things have hotkeys tied to them. These are simply collections of what are called runtime commands that Maya has predefined. And some of these do have hotkeys assigned, some of them don't. So it's your choice to figure out, okay, is this a menu item I wanna play with or something in an editor or something else random? What else is out there? Uh, I recommend first off going through here and seeing what's there and seeing what's already assigned, seeing what's available to assign uh, before you start making too many brand new things. Um, but pretty much again, all this stuff is still running Mel commands or even Python commands of some kind in here. So, but there's this difference between a runtime command versus a hotkey. So you have this list of, of all these different runtime commands and a runtime command is simply a single command name, you can call it, that then triggers a series of other code. And then normally what happens is you assign a hotkey to run the runtime command to then trigger that other code. So it could be something simple like for an editor for uh, back in the menu items go in there for the file menu, if I do a new scene, I can see what the runtime command is tied to that. The, the name of it, there is the name new scene, but the code running from that is this code in here, perform new scene zero. Uh, open scene does this, it's a little more, more robust. 
there are a handful of things in here where they've got five or six lines of code in there, but it's all triggered by one runtime command, which is then triggered by a hotkey. What's most commonly done with the runtime commands is obviously tying them to hotkeys. So all I do over here is click in this right space in the hotkey column and then type whatever hotkey I want. But then how do I know what choices are even available? That's where the keyboard over here comes in handy. So what I'm seeing right now are hot keyboard hotkeys or keyboard keys rather that have hotkeys tied to them with no modifiers. So no control, shift, alt, things like that. But I can hold down shift and will modify the view and show me what keys have mod hotkeys tied to them that require shift. So shift F is, is that one there with a little up arrow. I can see option F is flood surfaces. Control F is frame selected. Uh, a bunch of other things in there. So as you have a mouse over these things, you can see uh, what their options are there as well. A lot of things there and combinations on S, for example. So you can see combinations. I can do shift control, shift option, shift alt, shift command, command by itself. And it will refresh that view to show you what's available. So maybe I want to do like a command option here for my runtime command, actually command M that's open to my runtime command. So I'll maybe use command M. So back over here again, command M, whoops, now that minimizes things. So maybe that's not gonna work after all. Let's uh, pop that window back up again, bring you back. So command M, probably a no-go on this one. There we go, back in there. So let's try shift command M. There we go, that one works and didn't minimize things, okay. You can't necessarily override system level hotkeys as well, which is a what the command M does here on the Mac. Uh, so shift command M, that would work. Now it's not fully assigned. I have to save it down here first. So just hit save. Now, if you happen to type a hotkey in there, like, you know, S for set key, as you can see right in there. Um, maybe I go in here. Well, actually the delete backspace key won't do. I got to click the X in here to clear that out. So if I chose S, for example, that's taken and it warns you down here. This is already assigned to set key. Do you want to override that? You have to hit yes first before you save this out. So be aware that's going to warn you if you're taking a hotkey that is already assigned somewhere else. It's not going to stop you from re, you know, reclaiming that thing if you if you want to. I'll go back to my Shift Command M option. Um, but now just be aware if you take that away, it'll be taken away from whatever that was uh, that you pulled it from. Ooh, pardon me. Okay, so let's save that out. Boom, there we go. Hotkey settings have been saved. Okay, um, maybe I want to open something, you know, and find things by the names of stuff in there by the application command, which is a left hand column. You can search by the runtime command or search by the hotkey itself and figure out, okay, what is S taken up with? Well, you can see literally all the S's in here as well across uh, all these different things. Uh, Axe is not even tied to a certain entry up there at the top. So this covers all those categories. So multiple ways of seeing what's in there, uh, what's available to you and stuff like that. Uh, so I've already set aside that option there in my custom script, shift command M. So it's already assigned to me. Don't have to close the window, just pop back out in here, shift command M and that runs my script and does the thing.